I suppose in, as we move towards the, the end of the conversation, we need to sort of try to bring together how we move forward and what we would do next and, and those kinds of questions. And um, I suppose one way of putting this might be to say, if you'd got an opportunity to say something to the uh, local authorities in Bristol, Bath and the West of England uh, about how they were going to design and implement their digital placemaking policy for the next 10 years, what would you want to say to them? I just want to follow up on the point that keeps coming up again and again um, by Paul, by Stephen, by Sean, by Grace, by Rosanna and by Will, um, that um, the word agency that keeps coming up again and again, and that has also come up in my research. Um, with all of the interviewees that I was talking to, um, the sense of the freedom of space is so important. The fact that the safest that um, a lot of my queer interviewees have felt is when they have the autonomy and when they have the choice and the control to actively curate the space that they want to be in, um, the people that they want to be with, how they want to present themselves, whether it's their whole selves, whether it's part of themselves, themselves, like, you know, it's, it's that autonomy. And um, speaking with one of my um, dance friends who's doing a lot of community work um, in Bristol um, and trying to build the dance community, a really interesting point that came up was, um, so he works a lot with local cultural organizations and he says that um, one of the feeling that he gets from organizations is that the sense of connecting with local communities feels very much like a motion of the organization being like a central point and they're trying to reach out and then pull in as opposed and that feels very actually quite alienating and what that motion should actually be is a constant expansion and then a staying as opposed to oh I'm just going to grab these bits of community and culture that I think is relevant to me um, and then keeping like selectively keeping those things so I guess that is what I really want to say to, you know, policymakers, that that is the very fundamental and probably even subconscious and unconscious way of thinking is really negatively impacting on a lot of policies and on a lot of decisions with city planning. Um, and that is something that needs to be reconsidered. Everything Tim said was, you know, fantastic. And, you know, it was just really giving a, a visceral embodied sense of, of what that distribution looks like. Um, but I think one of the challenges is the word distribution there or the word of the giving of the agency. The agency is still then held. And then we're really back to the kind of charity model and the and the tea and civilization and the everything else. Whereas actually what I think many of us are talking about an interest in is why are we thinking about these things being centralized and then like tentacly engaging or or distributing little pieces what shapes what ideas what what will emerge from the people who are currently have been minoritized or marginalized like for example, when I'm teaching uh, creative writing, um, instead of kind of teaching or, or journaling, instead of teaching um, how we fit, how we envisage queer or people of colour or disabled stories into the dominant narratives that exist, like the redemption narrative, uh, like the, um, you know, the rising and falling arc. I love what um, Ariel Gore, a writer, wrote when she was first studying. She said um, that they taught her about the rising and the falling action. And she said, I don't want to put a penis in my story. She I'm going to have a vagina in the middle of my story, a giant vagina in the middle of my story. So that's the thing. And so she actually worked out, you know, what does a story look like? Both literally, one of her stories had her vagina in the middle of it. And then secondly, what does a story look like that is that shape rather than this shape? So this emerged from her body and her lived experience and her world. So what shapes, what ways of working, what ideas and cities are going to emerge from the communities, from the people who have currently been minoritized is I think what many of us are speaking to rather than an idea of how the power can, be, can keep being centralized and somehow be vaguely redistributed. And this is one of the challenges of any form of engagement is, the fact is the power is currently unequally 
uh, distributed in our world. It is is held by people who don't want to give it up. And as as Will has said, you know, 30 years time, we're going to be living in a very different world. We're living in a hopefully a, a different world now. It's going to be changing. And it is going to take, as Will said, some very difficult conversations and people looking. So I guess what I would be saying is um, to actually think, what am I doing as part of that? Am I occupying space that actually is stolen, that that doesn't belong to me? Do I need to step out? Do I need to step back? Do I need to uplift? What do I need to do? And how am I contributing to a good future conversation to inclusion? Or how am I pushing against the tide? Yeah, I guess I, I wanted to pick up a little bit on uh, on what um, both uh, Tim and, and Grace offered uh, around messages for well, calls to action for how to engage with communities where local authorities, etc., actually how, hold the majority of the power. And within that, I think, is the, the opportunity to expand what we think of as cultural asset, what we think of as infrastructure, and also expand the, um, the, the potentials and the emergent outcomes of that by working in a very deep and hyper-local way. Uh, what I would urge us to do in thinking about what infrastructure, what resources we might need in the next 30 years is actually for um, those in power to work with communities or hyper-local groups of people who are, who are interested in this kind of stuff and going very deep within those very... Uh, the scale of the relationship is, sorry, the scale of uh, the focus is, is much smaller. But within that, you can become a lot more focused. And so really, really thinking about um, a provocation that's offered by uh, Adrian Mary Brown around shifting from mile wide, inch deep engagement around movements or any kind of innovation to actually inch wide and mile deep movements that that actually shift shift the power dynamic because you then allow for this deep listening to occur this relationship to build over time and you're not looking for quick fixes for six months for five years you're actually growing with that community and understanding what the needs and desires and potentials and dreams are as it's growing on the ground and actually through that building of that very deep relationship and deep relationships of care you completely alter the potential emergent outcomes you 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 actually uh you actually usher in the possibility of transformation and i think without that kind of approach we we're not going to see any shift that 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 i think is a, a well said and something that we all might we all will aspire to i think it also highlights that the economic model for most of the platforms that we use is mile wide and it's not just mile wide it's actually global the reason that the platforms we use make money is because they make a tiny amount of money from every engagement that we have there is no other there is no other uh, model for uh, capitalist surveillance uh, economies so 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 that's the issue that we have is how do we re rebalance that economic structure into something that actually works in a, in a in a in a in a deeper and more local way Stephen, i know you wanted to come in on that issue as well i did and i'm gonna i'm gonna sound a bit more sort of pragmatic and prosaic i think but i think um we should also challenge ourselves on this i think and when i when i say ourselves i think i mean the sort of creative technology world um it's really struck me in 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 sort of writing up my research how the dominant story of Bristol is in terms of technology is economic. You know, we look at where we were twenty years ago and we look at where we are now, and what we describe is the contribution that high tech and creative and digital make to the GVA, um, the, the 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 economy of the UK, and we quote big figures in billions of value, all of which is really important. It creates a confidence. It creates a willingness to invest. It wants, it means the universities attract the brightest people. All of that is really important, but it completely misses anything to do with the value to, to communities and people. And there are no metrics for that. No, nobody's counted the the depth of um, the impact of this work over the decades. 
um, one of the interviewees talked to me about the fact that it wasn't that those things weren't important, it was that they had to smuggle them in. They had to smuggle them into the projects because if they were too explicit with the funders that they were trying to deliver community outcomes as well as economic outcomes, the risk was they wouldn't get funded. So my sense is we need to challenge ourselves and, and the pandemic and our current predicament gives us an opportunity to do so. We need to be much braver about putting forward propositions and bids that speak to the economy, but also speak to, to what Rosanna has been talking about in terms of the depth of, of engagement and the impact that, that that can have on individuals and communities. Um, I could go on, but I'll, I'll, I'll sort of stop there because I think we have a moment in time where we can reframe those metrics. Yeah, well, let, let's hope. And of course, uh, we have nothing if we don't have hope. Um, let's hope that actually coming out of this moment of history, we can find a different course in order to achieve some of the ideas that we've been discussing uh, in this conversation. I think you'll agree that there's a very um, amazing mix of different kinds of ideas floating through this conversation in a way that I hope serves to really do some reframing of the notion of digital placemaking and the smart city as we move into the future. I think we've begun something really significant here and I think it's in the mix of voices that the value of this work exists. It's no individual voice, it's no individual point of view, it's actually the mix that we've brought together and what that whole mix means to the future that we need to start to think about um, building on. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for their contributions in this conversation and also your amazing contributions over the period of the whole research program. It's been fantastic working with you all. And if uh, people who have been watching this want to know more or go deeper, uh, there is um, a series of publications and uh, outputs that all of this amazing group of people are making, which you'll be able to access through the Bristol and Bath website, Bristol and Bath Creative R&D website. So go and look, at, look for that coming out in the next few weeks. Uh, that's from the beginning of September 2020, should you be looking at this in the future. And there will also be in the next year, in spring of next year, we'll be physically showcasing the prototypes that have come out of this conversation, because as well as having these kinds of talks and doing this kinds of research, we've also been commissioning prototypes, which we hope go some way to be in dialogue with the conversations that we have been having because really uh, we have to be practical as well as theoretical and we have to have the theory and the practice. We have to be making work as well as talking about new kinds of work and it's really in that conjunction that the value of the programme will uh, find its level. So thanks very much for your attention now and I uh, look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the flesh, I hope. Okay, bye.